Yes, ma'am. Can we ask about homework? No. Homework is for Bible college. Yes, yes. Now you're welcome to call uh, Sister Levita, Sister Nolan, and they'll give you uh, directives on the uh, Bible college. Uh, and you can call me directly, but no, not not for this one. Okay. All right. Uh, now if you have some, uh, like something you want to bring up as far as your homework and yeah, for clarity, uh, I can address that while we get ready for Bible study. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? Any questions? I'm not sure what's going on with the lights. But, um, okay, Titus, ch Titus chapter number one. We're going to this real quick. I want to get down, actually, my focus today in Titus is uh, the 15th verse. So if you can go into your Bible to Titus, we're going to be on, on page six in your handouts. If you have the handouts, if not, we're going to read through it, most of it, so you'll be able to keep track and see where we are. But the Lord had put into my spirit Titus for some reason on tonight. Does anybody know your memory verse? Philippians 4 and 8. Does anybody know the memory verse? So I'll take that as a no. Sister Orlean says she did. You know the memory verse? Okay, grab the microphone, sister, and tell me the memory verse. It's right there in front of you. Tell me the memory verse, please. Thank you. Finally, veterans, whatever is so lovely, whatever is so pure, whatever is so honest, um, um, I, uh, whatever is so true. Now, can, uh, while she's uh, trying to finish that, does anybody, can anybody share with me why you think it is so difficult for, for, for you guys to just memorize one verse, one scripture? Yes, but yes, Mother T. I think I know it. Think you know it? You got a microphone? What was that, sister? That's, that's, I understand. I, I'm trying to make a point. Uh, I'm just trying to ask you all, why do you think it's so difficult for you all to, to learn that? And then now she's trying, she's memorized it, but she's having a difficult time saying it now. Yes, sister. I have a problem with that. It's a very powerful verse. It keeps, um, uh, we know that in the wars that our mind, and whatever situation that we're facing today, if we constantly keep that scripture in the forefront of our minds, then we overcome. We, the enemy don't defeat us because we're saying whatsoever think on these things we think mm -hmm. on these things every every single day then you know uh, the enemy can't penetrate us with things that it's in that's in the world that's i would say that's the reason why it's hard for us to really learn the scripture because it'll help us to overcome what the enemy has for us that's good that's good now does anybody have any idea how powerful your mind is Your mind is very, very powerful. Back when I was a younger man, they used to have a commercial on television. It says that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. You ever heard that? Yeah. All right, mind is a terrible thing to waste. Here's the thing about, about, about your life. If you look at your life right now, your life happened because of what's in your mind. Y'all know that, right? I need you. It's not because of your mother, your father, your husband, or your wife, your cousin, Nay Nay, Shaniqua, Pukinim. Everything that's going on in your life is because it was in your mind first. It manifested from your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right. And so, uh, if you want to get angry with anyone, start with the man or the woman in the mirror, because you are a manifestation of your mind. Now, here's what happens with words. The Bible said, "Life and death is in the power of the tongue." Are you guys finished over there? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Right. So here's what happens: someone can speak death, but because your mind is on God, you override their words with your mind. 
Here's the problem, and I want to share this with y'all because um, the reason why many people take insults so personally is because to you those insults are true. Did you catch that? The reason why you take them so personally is because to you those insults are true. Like I shared with you all a while back, you can call me white cracker, redneck pricklewood all day long, right? Those words are not true to me. They're not true for me. You can call me nigga, spook, nigger, whatever. Guess what? Those words don't identify me, so those words bounce off. Why? Because I can't receive those. Those are not true. But if those words are true to you, uh, that's how fights start. That's how confusion start. Because you're not thinking on what sort of things are lovely, what sort of things are true, what sort of things are true. Because you are thinking, those, those words have power, and you give words power because your mind is in the wrong place. That's why Christ said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Is that what the word says? So guess what we should be doing? We should be thinking like Jesus. Amen. How do you learn how to think like Jesus? You have to know Jesus. How do you get to know Jesus? By memorizing his word. Amen. And then when you memorize his word, you go and you get on, get on your knees and you say, God, reveal to me what your word is saying to me right now. I need to understand this so I can apply this to my here and now. Titus is a, what's they call it, an epistle for pastoral training and teaching. It's, it's there to equip churches and people that's trying to grow in the body of Christ. Paul is a servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ according to faith of God's elect and acknowledging the truth with his after godliness. He's telling you about his uh, resume. Next verse. Go ahead and read that one for me. Number two, somebody can read it. Number two, Titus 2. Okay. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the end of the world. Number three, does anybody have number three? Number three. Read them. Can you use the microphone if you have a sister, please? But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching. How? Which is... No, go back. He manifested. Does anybody know what the word manifested means? Oh. Manifested. Anybody know what that word means? Manifested. Oh. All right. Get your smartphone. Look up. Type in manifested. Tell me what that means. He did what? He brought forth. So he brought forth this word through preaching, which is what? The word. I mean, uh, which is committed unto him. Does anybody know what the word committed means? Committed to. Committed. What does that mean? Faithful. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a translation or a definition of the word. But in this context, it does not mean faithful. So it's an assignment. Somebody say an assignment. So Paul is an apostle or missionary and on missionary journey, he's on an assignment and his assignment is to preach the word. Look at your neighbor and say, your name is Paul today. Uh -huh. And your assignment is to preach the word. If you're a man of God, a woman of God, your assignment is to go out and make disciples out of all men. That means all mankind. That's male and female. And the way that happens is you have to be able to preach the word. That means to declare, to proclaim. Not to hook with the, with the organ playing. <laughs> That's not preaching. <laughs> so Amen. That's entertainment. Mm -hmm. Alright. Preaching which is committed to me according to the command of God our Savior. Now number four was the same. Two times. Uh-huh. My own son. Keep on going. This is after the common faith. So this is where you get this term spiritual son, spiritual fathers from. It's from Paul is talking to Titus, who is his son? Who is his son through sharing the gospel. He brought him up in the gospel, discipled him, and assigned and released him to be a pastor in the region that he's in. Keep on reading. Grace, mm -hmm. mercy, and peace okay. from God the Father okay. and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Alright, go to the next verse. What's it say? For this cause, mm -hmm. Levi the end, uh, cra 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 okay, that thou should set in order uh -huh. things So here's Paul, an apostle. He's put 
uh, Titus in charge of pray. He's, he's in charge of the church there to set the church in order. Someone say set it in order. All right, so God always has leadership. Someone say leadership. leadership. And leadership is there to set it in order. And if you, watch this now. If you are the leader of your house, God expects you to set your house in order. Does that make sense? You are the leader. All right, you are the head of that house because you have God inside of you and him guiding you should be able to make sure your house is orchestrated properly, set things in order so that there's nothing wanting. That means there's nothing lacking. That means everything is done correctly, properly. There are no holes. There's nothing missing. No. Make sense? That means you should be able to have your eyes open and know what's going on in your house. If, if, if there's something loose in your house, you should know about it. If there's something leaking in your house, you should know about it. Am I right about it? Amen. And, and, and well, most of y'all didn't get raised in the, in the ghetto, but uh, most people in the ghetto, they made sure everything was locked before they went to sleep. Amen. Amen. When I lived in the jungle, everything was locked. I made sure my weapons were loaded and ready to go. Amen. Before I went to sleep. Amen. I don't want to get up looking for anything in the dark. Yes? That's the way it was back in those days. Now I can just wake up and say, Jesus, this is a different world. Amen. It's a different world now. Amen. I don't need I don't need my AK or my 38 or my 9 millimeter. I don't need I don't need my Ruger 40. I don't need that stuff. Amen. As long as I got King Jesus, I don't need. The Bible says, ordained elders and elders in every city at, that I have appointed me. So Titus is in charge of a region, and he's going to appoint pastors to put in place. Let's go to the number six. If they be what? Now, before you put somebody in place as ordained, as, as far as being a preacher, someone that's in charge of other folk and in charge of preaching the word, you got to be holy. Somebody say holy. Holy, holy. holy. In, in, the, in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, he says, be transformed by the, by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is God's good and perfect will is for your mind, right? For your life. But if you go to the first chapter, be, be not transform or be you transformed, right? Well, guess what? We have to be what's called holy and acceptable. All right? Holy and acceptable. Because, because what's this now? You cannot preach a holy message when you have a sinful life. You can't put clean water out of a dirty glass. Make sense? The glass got to be clean. You. Most folks that have any sense, you're going to rinse the glass out before you, have the dirty. before you put water in it. Right. Amen. Amen. Even me, when I go to my cabinet, my cabinets are clean. The cup is clean. It was, put, it, was put in, it was washed in the sink. It was washed in the dishwasher. Our dishwasher, it, 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 and it goes into the cabinet. But guess what? It, I'm going to go ahead and still rinse it out. Oh, okay. Amen. Because I need you to understand this. There's dust in the air you can't see. There's dust in this room right now. You can't see it. <laughs> right? But if you got a light bright enough and you shine that light at the right angle, you can see all the dust that's going around in this atmosphere. That's contamination. All right? Listen, I want you all to understand this now. We are living in a fallen world. We're always going to be surrounded by contamination. But you've got to be sensitive. Somebody say sensitive to the contaminants so that you know how to... Protect yourself. Does anybody in here have allergies? I have a, one of my, my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law has allergies. All right, you have allergies. Um, and, and a certain time of the year, I don't know whatever you're allergic to. Is anybody allergic to anything? No. Third low, okay. Uh, some people are allergic to seafood, peanut butter, you name it. Well, guess what will happen? If somebody put peanuts no. or peanut butter in their food, they can go into shock and die because of the allergic reaction. Here's the thing, people that's allergic to different things, they're very sensitive to that in the atmosphere. So if they walk into the room, if you're allergic to peanuts, and you pick up a whiff of, smell, a, a, a whiff of the smell, you're not gonna go any closer, why? Because there is a consequence to being close to something that you're allergic to. Does that make sense? Well, as a man and woman of God, you should be allergic to sin. Yeah. You should be you. You should be allergic to anything that's not godly. So when you walk into a situation and your spiritual nose picks it up, you don't keep going forward. 
Because guess what? It's going to have devastating consequences. If I continue. Mm -hmm. Yes? That's right. Amen. So I saw somebody back there raise their hand up that said they had, what, had an allergy, was allergic to something. I don't know. And you're allergic to something, Sister Nolan? What you're allergic to? <laughs> No. What you say? Nickel. Oh, nickel. Okay, it's aluminum. Um, different kinds of metal. Uh huh. And amoxicillin and um, a few All right. So she can't take those. So when you go to a doctor, most doctors they would ask you, "Do you have any allergies? Are you allergic to anything?" Why? Because when they prescribe medication, they want to make sure they're not doing you harm. They're trying to help you out. Does that make sense? So he must be, this is the people that, that Timothy, I mean, sorry, Titus is appointing in these different cities. He's got to be blameless, the husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. Now, that does not say one wife at a time. Right? Husband of one wife having what? What, what does it say? Read it. Having what kind of children? All right, so your children should be faithful for you to be blameless. Hmm. It, it should, your children, it should manifest in your children. All right, because here now, when Jesus told them to preach the gospel, where did he tell them to preach the gospel first? Charles with a J. Jerusalem? He told us to speak in Jerusalem. That's your family. Yep. So you should be preaching to your family before you preach to me. Yep. Yes? That's the way it should work. So, so Paul was telling Titus, don't put people to be pe teaching other folk that can't even teach to their own families. Yes, sir. But if, yes. but if you teach Just them... Just use your outside voice. But if you teach them and they don't listen or they don't receive it, you still can't be ordained? You're just not supposed to be ordained? Not here. There's a, there's a criteria. People are, I want you to understand this, brothers and sisters. So we're not going to stay in this chapter very long because um, there are none of you all in here that's going to be ordained anytime soon, I don't believe. All right. But to be a preacher, you're supposed to be held to a higher standard. Oh, yeah. Okay? All right. Train up child the way should go. When they get old, they won't get departed from it. Uh, we, we all know that some of us got some knucklehead children. Can I get one witness up in here? Amen. 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 Some of my kids have lost their cotton picking mom. Amen. Amen. But they came up in church. They was here every time the church was open. Amen. 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 So I may not qualify now, but I qualify then. But I, I, but here's the thing. I believe they're going to get saved. Amen. But it's why this now. I'm not going to stay there long. This Bible says, faithful children are not accused of any what? Riot or unruly. This is somebody that you don't have hard headed, knuckle headed children that don't listen. Now, my, my the, the ones that's not saved may not be saved, but guess what? They don't disrespect our house. Amen. Amen. My house, yes means yes, and no means no. There's no extended conversation. Amen. Matter of fact, my wife will let you know I don't raise my voice or argue. Not, I don't have to do that because the door is there. If you don't like the rules, find you somewhere else to stay. Can I get one witness up in here? Amen. Yep. Amen. That's been all, all my life. I'm not, no, uh-uh. No. You have to lose, 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 lose all. Because watch this now. You've got to be in control. So I say in control. Yes. You are the authority. If they don't respect your authority, they should not be in your house. They have places for people that need that kind of treatment. Juvenile hall, jail, prison. Yeah. Y'all looking at me like I lost my mind. Amen. You can preach to them in prison. Amen. But you, watch this now. And the point I'm trying to make is this. You should not be stressed out living in a house you're paying bills at. Huh. Amen. That's right. They should be, if anybody should be walking around on eggshells in your house, it should be other folk, not you. Your house is supposed to be your castle. Mm -hmm. That's all right. You know what? I don't even need your amen. You keep on with your headaches and your migraines and sleepless nights and ulcers. I'm going to go to sleep and sleep all night long. Amen. Because you're going to just, in, in my house, you're going to do what I say. Amen. 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 
not riders. We don't have no ride people that are out riding. Our kids are not doing graffiti and running in gangs and doing all kind of treacherous stuff. That's not going to happen. Amen? Amen. It's not going to happen. Number seven, what's it say? For a what? For a bishop is blameless. Uh huh. As the steward of God. Uh huh. Not self willed. He ain't self willed, hard headed, make up his own agenda, lean to his own understanding, do his own thing. Uh, a bishop or a leader in church is not a dictator. Okay? Alright. Um, you kind of lose. If, I don't know, some of y'all call it being a strong black man, a strong black woman. You're just a bully. Alright? Bullies are dictators. Those don't fit for as far as, as people that God trusts to proclaim the gospel. The gospel has, come on, say the gospel has to work on me. The gospel has to work on me. Before it can work on somebody else. It's not that well, not so angry. That, that means I'm going to have a quick temper. I mean, here is something, they, they're ready to fight at the drop of the hat. Those are, those are not preacher materials. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you so you got to forget about the, forget, about, this is what Paul says, I'm forgetting about the things that are behind me and I'm pressing toward the mark. So you have to leave ghettoism. See, and, and I, I was giving my wife a little, uh, some, some, some training on the hood the other day because I told them, I said, you guys don't have no ghetto. You have ghetto, uh, what do they call it? Uh, you have a affiliation. Yeah, you got some affiliation, but you ain't ghetto. Because you, the question you ask is, baby, you need to understand, you were raised in La Puente. You don't have any ghetto in you. All right, you have ghetto flavor. Some folks are ghetto fabulous. But ghetto is a whole different culture. It's a whole different mindset. And if you don't know what you're doing in the hood, stay away because you're going to get ate up. Amen. Here's the thing, because see, the whole culture is different. Everything is done differently in the ghetto. Everything is done for a purpose. Yep. In the hood. Mm -hmm. Alright, and you go into the hood trying to be nice to folk, you don't get God. Because you can't be nice in the hood because that's weakness. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Mother T, you used to have. Mother Sister, uh, sister uh, Judy, uh, we got these little decorations there for Christmas and New Year's, but so I can't see some of y'all. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but once you get saved, once you get born again, the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. Mm, yeah, right. All right. Back in the old days, in the hood, you have to fight at the drop of the head. That was that was the way you survive. Don't get caught slipping. Right. But in the Christianity world, you should be slow to anger. That's right. We told you last week, you have to learn how to turn the other cheek. Yeah. Vengeance is the Lord's. That's right. Give no place to the devil. Yeah. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. We talked about all that. All right? Not self will not so anger, not giving to mind. You can't be drinking. I know some of y'all say, well, I'm going to drink some for my stomach's sake. Your name is not Timothy. <laughs> And if you run your house the way God says run your house, you would have peace in your house and you won't need uh, any extra um, sleeping pills, NyQuil, or whatever to go to sleep. You just lay your head on the pillow and go to sleep. You won't be jumping up every five minutes. What's that? Huh? That's right. Okay, Jeff Wills, not so angry, not giving wine, no striker. These are fighters, not given to filthy lucre. You, you do everything for money. Everybody in the hood trying to come up. Uh, you should not be trying to come up because the, the Bible says that my God shall supply all your need according to... Right? You can destroy a person with your mouth. You're very abusive. Very abusive tone. Right? There's a way to say things when you're anointed and a way you say things when you're in the flesh. It's totally different. You can say the same words, they have a different effect. Number nine, what's the eighth verse? What's it say? What's that? This is, a, this is a good quality. You should be a lover of what? Does anybody know what hospitality is? Uh, friendliness. Friendly, I like that. Hospitality. Anybody ever heard of Southern hospitality? Yes. Does anybody know what that looks like? Very you from the South? 
Do you remember any Southern hospitality? Of course. Why don't we do Southern hospitality in California? They take it for weakness here. Oh, so you're surrounded by ghetto folk and they take kindness for weakness. And they'll take advantage of it. Well, here's what, this is what the Holy Ghost will give you. The Holy Ghost will give you what's called discernment. That will, discernment will let you know who you should be able to pour out hospitality to and who you need to stay away from. You're not equipped to be around everybody. Like I share with you all, I say you all are not equipped to go into the hood to preach the gospel because you don't have any ghetto. You don't get played. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God took Moses out of Egypt. He didn't send Moses back to Assyria. He sent Moses back to Egypt. And when he left Egypt, he didn't send Moses to Hollywood. He sent Moses back to the desert. Why? He spent 40 years in Egypt. He spent 40 years in the desert. Amen. Amen. So before you start going to all these places, you got to make sure you got a testimony and that you can handle that. You're not going to stick out. Because if you go to a place and you're not from that place, you don't know the culture of that place, you're going to become a distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Amen. How many people walk here catch the bus? Oh, Rare thing for me. All right. I, one time I had to get a car fixed in Los Angeles, and I was like, I'll just catch the Metro Link. I want to get on a ride out right there. <laughs> I jumped on the Metro Link, out of the, out the Metro Link, then I got on the bus, and then went to one of these Union Station things, and I'm like, I'm lost. I'm just thought lost as lost can be. And then uh, one of the people was sitting behind me and said, you don't ride the bus that much, do you? I said, no. <laughs> I, said I said, can you tell? They said, yeah, yeah, I can tell. Amen. I didn't know the price, I didn't know where the money went, I didn't know nothing. In fact, when I rode the bus last, they had RTD. Okay. That was the last time I rode the bus, it was RTD. Amen, and I think it was like 25 cents to ride the bus. And I was like, I forget, it was like a dollar or something, and you get a transfer. And I was getting ready to pay, so wait a minute, did you just get off the Metro Link? I said, yeah, they said, well, your ticket I already paid for. I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Amen, but guess what, I stuck out. Amen. So if God was to give me a bus ministry, he would put me into a bus atmosphere a while if so I don't go out and get busted. Yes? Does this make sense? All right. But watch this now. Back to this hospitality thing because it's not it's more than just being nice. It's, it's, it's being uh, to a point where people feel comfortable being around you. You welcome it. I'm going to tell you, every time I go to Arkansas, they, they, the first thing they tell me, they said, uh, your money ain't no good down here. That's right. That's Put your money back in your pocket. All right? They give you food, give you a car to drive, right. give you a place to stay. Right. Huh? No, you sleep right. No, man, no, you take my room. Where, you, where your hotel at? Let me go, let me go down here and talk to the lady at the desk. Yep. <laughs> huh? I've never, I think, I think all, all the times I go to Arkansas, I've been going there for 15 years. Wow. I got a rental car one time. One time. And guess what? They paid for it. Right? Because yeah. I went to the church to preach. They said, where'd you get the car from? I said, oh, Enterprise. Oh, you know, so-and-so is the, is the manager over there. Call him up. Right? <laughs> right? Here's the thing about being hospital. I've got to stay here for a minute because uh, does anybody ever get company at your house? Company coming, company. Sometimes, yeah. How does your company feel when they get there? Oh, she said they don't want to be there. Why company don't like being at your house? Think about this because you're trying to go out there and let your light shine. You're trying to be a witness. You're trying to bring people to Christ. You're trying to take, tell people, say, look, when you start following Jesus, your life is going to be great, magnificent. You have the joy kind of life, life more abundantly, head not the tail, above only not the leaves. You're going to get a limb not the bar. You got all these great gigantic promises. I praise him in the morning, praise him in the evening, but don't nobody like being around you. Why is that? Come on, say something's wrong. You have no hospitality. You're not very hospitable. Watch this now. Let me tell you this about people. People know, and you know, when people, when, when, if you go to a room with somebody and they don't like you, mm -hmm. 
You know it. Am I right, Sister Antonia? I mean, uh, Shalina. Y'all say, where Antonia at? I don't know. We're talking to her in the spirit. But you know what you know when the folk don't like you. Well, guess what? Even as fake as you think you are with your fake self, people can tell when you can't stand it. Huh? <laughs> I was somewhere, and we, we, had, we, had, we had drove hard to get to Alabama one time. Got there, and the, the, the very first question out they mind, they mouth, does anybody, tell me what you think the very first question. Where are you from? No, that wasn't where you from. How was the drive? No, that wasn't it. That would have been nice. Have a seat. No, the very first thing that came out of their mouth was, how long y'all gonna be here? So the house is out here. Come here, sit down. How was the trip? How was the weather? No. Hey, how long y'all gonna be here? I'm glad you said that. I'm not, I can't stay there long, but some of y'all gonna get the revelation in a minute. The reason why God can't really use you is because you have no hospitality. You're rude, short, precise, direct. Well, I don't have time to do the down in the conversation. If they don't get it, they don't get it. You're mean. How would you feel if folk treated you that way? You went to the restaurant or the grocery store or wherever, and they, whatever. My wife was somewhere the other day, and the lady was just so rude to me. Right? Amen. And most of y'all, they got a little ghetto in you. you the, your, they get a little twinge in your neck when you get around you. <laughs> Can I get one witness up in here? Yeah, right. Well, you're doing that to folk. I'm not, if I'm talking about your father, I'm not. Don't get upset with me. We're in Bible study trying to help each other out. Because you should have some friends. Some, somebody should like being around you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Believe it or not, Sister Nolan like being around me. No, she, has, she has medication, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Nolan likes, she likes being around me. Oh. Amen. 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 Lover, lover of, what's this now? Lover of what kind of man? Good man. No, no, no. We got to get back to this good man thing. That, that, cause that can't be for sober. Because if you hang around with bad men, you're not going to be sober long. This is, he says, ha, ha, get lover of hospitality, a lover of good men. So if you're going to be a lover of good men, you've got to have the ability to know what's good and what's bad. Okay. Some folk out there are not good. Amen. So you've got to be able to recognize whether you're in the presence of somebody that's good or somebody that's bad. If they're not bad, I mean, if they're not good, then you should limit your exposure. That's right. Plant the seed and get the step in. Be sober, holy, and be just holy and temperate. This is a, the description of a godly person. Next verse, what's it say? Holding what? Fast. Someone say committed. committed. Someone say dedicated. Come on, say steadfast, steadfast. unmovable. That means I'm unwavering. It doesn't matter. Here's the thing about being holy, steadfast, holy, fast. The faithful word he has been taught. In, in other words, I can somebody can teach you the word of God. You don't go outside the doors and you get distracted by somebody preaching something differently. Yeah, right. Amen. One of my favorite preachers is Farrakhan. My favorite preachers is is, is Farrakhan of the nation. That's one of my oh, favorite my preachers, Mother T. I can listen to him all day, every day. But guess what? He's never going to convince me to assalamu alaikum and be a Muslim. <laughs> Amen. Because I know the Bible is the word of God, not the Quran. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 But, but watch this now. Some of you all can get up in here and get the word of God, get it, and you got it. And there's somebody go out there and say, yeah, but what about this? Oh, I never thought about it that way. Because you're not holding faithful to the words that's been taught to you. That's right. That's right. Come on, so you got to be solid. Yeah, be solid. Your Bible says, the Bible says, let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. You've got to be stable. Because if you're unstable, the Bible says, you are double-minded, you're unstable in all your ways. All right, watch this now. That you may be able to 
by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince what? Gainsayers. Gainsayers. Someone say doubters. doubters. People that don't believe you. And watch this now. The folk that's going to give you the hardest time are going to be folk in your house. The one that's closest to you, your husband, your wife, your child, your cousin, them, your mama, them, those folk that knew you before you got saved. Those are gangsayers. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you say. Uh, hmm. Amen. Many remember years ago, I, I, I became a minister and I went back to Compton. And, and one of them said, Yeah, I want to see what kind of church that is that made him a minister. <laughs> Amen. Because people's mind is still in 1978. This is 2017. Right? It's amazing to me sometimes you go to places and say, well, how you get this and how you do that and how you do that. I said, well, uh, I think it's stuck in time. I said, do you, does anybody know how long ago 1978 was? No. How long ago was that? 40 years. That's a long time. That's a whole thing. I need you to understand this now. It takes a long time for you to convince the gainsayers that you really have what you say you have. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So you got to be solid. Somebody say solid. solid. So watch this now because, see, your mind, your, your subconscious, it, it plays tricks on you and you, it manifests inside of you and outside of you. And so when you come to people presence, they're studying you and they're looking for any kind of flaw. And if your mind is not right, your mannerism won't be right either. Yeah, that's right. So that's why you have to memorize these scriptures. What sort of things are lovely? Because you can't go to sleep with a grudge in your mind. You can't treat people the way they treat you. Angry and resentful, trying to, trying to get back. Huh? Number, number 10, what's it saying? For there's what? Many unruly. Un-what? There are many unruly. And what? Okay. Empty talkers. And sometimes uh, people will listen to the empty headed folk faster they will listen to somebody with some sense. That's right. You know those empty minded folk they can talk. They talk so good. Well, yeah. Vain talkers, what's it and, and read, what's it say? And starts with a D. What's a deceiver? A liar. A liar. Huh? Read. Especially they of the circumcision. They're talking about the Jewish Pharisees, the people that was ruling the situation at the time. They called, that was, their nickname was the circumcision. Alright? And so guess what? These would have been the folk who were the standards. Somebody say the standards. Standard. They would have been the standard of what's called righteousness and holiness. And Paul is telling Titus, stay away from the kind of folk because they look good. Jesus said they're whitewashed tombs full of dead man bones. Mm -hmm. Yes? Jesus called them a brutal vipers. Vipers is the worst kind of poisonous snake. No. Yes? But well, you gotta remember that. Well, these are the circumcision. These are the people that folk are looking up to. Some of y'all are coming to church, and you look up to church folk, and these church folk are nothing but Pharisees. And you're sitting up there patterning your life and, 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 and measuring yourself against somebody on their way to hell. Come on, say, let the Bible be your guide. And not another person. Amen. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. The brother sitting next to you, a sister next to you going to hell does not give you justification or permission to go to hell. Even if you go to church and you've got a jacked up pastor. Alright? You want to snicker and talk about the pastor? You will wind up in hell with him. You better pray for that man or that woman and get yourself, come on, sir, and deliver. Amen. Amen. Number 11, come on. Going through this quickly. Whose mouth must be what? Stop. Stop. That means you need, to, you need to shut these people up in the conversation. Amen. Well, I'm just going to knock them. In. No, you uh -huh. learn how to walk away. It's not that serious. You can listen to me, brothers and sisters. Every conversation you don't need to be involved in. Amen. When I was a street person, I would tell people, never, ever, ever argue with somebody that you hate. That's right. All right? And never fight when you got an audience. No. Ever. Amen? Because you don't wind up in prison. 
you're going to wind up in prison. And then when you're angry and you're doing stuff, you're going to make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you're going to get caught. That's right. Amen. How do you think police officers catch criminals? Because criminals get angry and they do crazy stuff and they make, they make mistakes. And they catch you in the mistakes and they catch you in the lie because you got all into your feelings. You got emotional. All right? Stop the conversation. Walk away. The, the, the Bible says that they are what? They are who do what? At subvert? Does anybody know what the word subvert means? Subvert, subvert, subvert. Anybody know what that word means? Control, take over, uh, submit. Just think about somebody coming to trip you up. To trip you up and to snag you, to, to bring you under their authority. Whole households teaching things they ought not for filthy lucre sake. They're preaching to get paid. And you got preachers these days that know good and well they have not talked to God. And God is not talking to them. They're trying to get paid. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. If you don't know the word, amen, somebody can come with their, 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 their smooth words and fool you. Huh? I remember I was in the Marine Corps and I, and I saw, uh, I saw on, it was the, I think it was Newsweek magazine. And on the cover, it was like, it was down in Guyana, I think it was, Jim Jones. Huh? Do you not know people were selling all their houses and, and cashing in all their bank accounts and savings accounts and all their stocks and their bonds and they were giving it to that ministry? And he flies these people over to South America to start a new paradise. <laughs> they were black people, white people, Mexican, Chinese, you name it. He started out as, as this nice, charismatic preacher up in San Francisco. He was feeding the homeless. He had about five different different ministries doing all this great stuff. Amen. The next thing you know, he done lost his kind of picking mind. Walking around with sunshades on, and he's made himself a god. And the reason why he's able to get away with this kind of stuff is because people don't know God, and you don't know the Word. Amen. Come on, say, when you know the Word of God, and you know God, you can recognize folk that God don't know. Thank you for putting that subverted up there. It says, whole houses teaches things with they all number, number 12. Number 12. Number 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the credence are always what? One of their own prophets. And guess what? If he's one of their prophets, guess what? He's a prophet liar. They're evil beasts, slow bellies. Anybody know what a slow, slow belly belly. is? <laughs> What's a slow belly? Uh, They're what? Fat. I mean, uh, full of themselves. You call them pigs? Anybody know a slow belly? What's a slow belly? Slow to do something. But just think about somebody that's big, fat, greedy, never satisfied, never enough. Huh? According to the book of Amos, they drink beer by the bowls full. You need a pillow, brother? You need a pillow for your leg? Yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. Number 13. Number 13. What's it say? This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them. What's it say? Sharp. But, but what's that word say? Rebuke me. What's that word say? Oh, sister, it's okay. Just keep on sinning. Come as you are. God loves you. God don't mind. Just keep on sinning. It's like, no. The Bible said rebuke them what? Why, so, why is it so uncomfortable for you all to say that? I don't know. Uh, hmm? So we're rebuking the false teachings? Yes. Yeah. Because they're subverting old, old households. Just think about somebody coming and bringing a whole house into captivity and into control of Satan. Because this is what happens. All right, because guess what? Everybody in this room represents at least 100 people. Yeah, right. Everybody in this room, you represent at least 100 people. There's at least 100 people directly connected with you. 
If you look at your mother, your father, your sisters and brothers, and all your cousins, all their children, and all their friends, you give them to 100 people real quickly. Well, guess what happens when you fall? They find out. Then they find out the reason for the, for the fall. Oh. Yeah, right. Now it's a stumbling block to them. And so what the devil will do is he will use influential people to affect other fall. But guess what? The Holy Ghost gives us more influence than Satan. You have what's called discernment. Your discernment should be able to tell you and let you know, I've got to stop this now. That's why sometimes when I'm having conversations, I just, I should stop people right in the middle of their sentence. Stop. I said, stop now. I don't want to hear another word. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 no. <laughs> yes, sir. Who do we reprove? The uh, believers? We're not even in that scripture. Let's just deal oh, yeah, with this sorry. rebuke right now. Rebuke them sharply so that they what? So that they may be what? So you're doing this to correct them to get them back on course. We're not trying to get rid of anybody, kick anybody out of the church. We just want to make sure you're preaching the right things. Right. See, that's why you notice know certain people get to preach and certain people don't. Certain people get to teach, certain people don't. Right. Amen. I don't need your contaminated stuff. Can I get one witness up in here? Amen. Well, my other pastor told me this. This ain't your other pastor's church. <laughs> all right? All I want to hear is what the Bible says. I don't want to hear. Yes, ma'am. When you say It's a, it, it's yes and no, but it depends on the situation because there's a time and a place for open review. There's a time and a place to get, the Bible says to get on the rooftop and cry it out. Matter of fact, rebuke it. The Bible actually say rebuke them openly so that others can see. Look that up for yourself. So that others can see and they won't be tempted to do what they're doing. All right? But for the most part, we're supposed to use the Matthew uh, 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 set up and go to that person privately and talk to them and say, hey. All right? And when you go, make sure you go with the word of God, not your opinion. What I feel, I don't want to hear about your feelings. Show, show them in the scripture. Sit there, the Bible, the Bible says, let's time, let's reason together. Reason with them in the scripture. And if you can't get any understanding, go, the Bible says, go get somebody else. And then you two come and try to reason with that person. If that don't work, then it says to bring them to the elders of the church. What are you trying to do? You're trying to get them with somebody that can open up their understanding. Yeah, all right? And any of y'all that have Jehovah Witness coming to your house, they always have the junior person knocking on the door and the senior person is standing behind them. Right. All right? And the senior person does not normally start talking until you, they recognize you got some sense. They don't mind you being rude. They don't mind you slamming the door because for them, that's training to that person. That, that senior They're person trying to push that junior person to the side and take the lead. Huh. All right. And the first thing they're going to do is say, well, um, do you believe the King James Bible? Yeah. yeah, I believe the King James Bible. Then they're going to say, well, can I show you something in the King James Bible if you have one? Yeah, guess what they're going to show you? They're going to show you certain scriptures and they're going to quote them to you out of context and because you're not sound in the doctrine, now you're bewildered. And so they see your eyes rolling around and they say, you know, uh, you really can't understand the Bible just by itself. We have this book called The Watchtower. Can we show it to you? Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I know the whole routine. Guess what I did? I invited to my house one at a time. Then you and I see a Jehovah which is nowhere in my entire neighborhood. Come in the house, you want something to drink? And we start having a Bible study from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. And when they leave my house, they know about Jesus. We didn't argue, we didn't fight, I did not raise my voice, my face did not pop out of my head. Why? I'm going to give them the doctor the word of God. And guess what? Guess what? This is what always happens. The senior guy will always grab that junior guy and say, come on, let's go. Because the junior head is then he gonna do he doing the bobble. Oh, I, I didn't. <laughs> and they're about to lose one of their converts. Oh, All right. See, watch this now. You should be able to preach, teach, and live the word of God with some sense and some intellect. Come on, see, you should know something. Know something. Amen. People should not be able to just come and tell you anything. <coughs> Make sense? I'm watching. I'm watching. We got to get those young men on. All right. Um, number fourteen. What's it say? 
Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Uh huh. There's fairy tales made of stuff. Read. And commandments of men. This is stuff made up by men. The, 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 according to the traditions right now, the Jewish people have expanded the law of God to over 600 different laws and fables. These are made up stuff they say you must do. Folk will tell you in the church right now, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this to be saved. Yeah, right. Huh? Well, how does Jesus die and set us free and, and tear down the wall of petition and then for us to come back and get bound again? Had a lady on Facebook want to argue with me because we go to church on Sunday. Where, well, well, Saturday is the Sabbath day. I never said Saturday was not the Sabbath day. I said, but Sabbath means to rest. I said, ain't nobody resting at church on Sunday. <laughs> Amen. The preacher is sweating. The praise team is sweating. The musicians is sweating. The ushers is everybody working. That's work. Amen. Now, Saturdays when we're doing our Bible college and Bible institute, well, you, that's probably closer to what they're doing in the Bible on a Saturday. But the Bible on the Sabbath day, God rested. That means he did nothing else. So I'm not replacing the day of worship because as, as far as I'm concerned, a man or woman of God should worship God every day. Amen. If God is living on the inside of you, you should always be in a place of worship. Right. Amen. Amen. This building is not the church. This is not the church. You don't get up out your house and go to church. You are the church. Amen. This is where the assembly of word and action meets and gathers to, 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 to edify, to build up one another, to encourage one another. Yes? Did you, uh, did you all find out that scripture about open rebuke yet? Look for it on the computer. Let's go ahead and read this next verse. Uh, uh, the term of truth. Right? What verse we stopped on? Okay, 14. What's it say? We're on 15 now? Alright, 15 says, oh, I've got all these different versions up here. Let me get to the King James. Unto the pure what? Unto the pure, this is people with pure mindsets, pure motives. They don't have hidden agendas. And if you are a child of God, a man or woman of God, you should not have impure motives or hidden agendas. No strings attached. I'm going to give you something to give me something. Amen. This is unpure. Uh, back a while, just, just recently, we just went through a whole bunch of scandal with all these, these powerful men in position, and you have these women that's having sex with them or whatever they're doing to gain positions. Not 30, 40 years old or later, oh, he touched me. All right. I'm sorry. Amen. He, Back in my day, if you went and grabbed a woman and she didn't want you to touch her, she'd turn around and knock the stool out of you. Right. Right. Get your hand off of me. Right? What happened to these like What happened? Well, I was just in fear and paranoia. You were just concerned about your paycheck. Yeah, right. And guess what you did? You prostituted yourself for some money. It's quiet up in here. Well, he was my boss. What else was I to do? HR, turn that, turn that sucker in. Amen. Amen. This is what I shared with this one lady. She said, well, I, I, why, why would I have to be a reporter? I said, well, guess what happened? I said, when you did not report what happened to you, think about all those other women he was able to get away that, and do that to. Oh, I never thought about that. But I know because you were just in your selfish mindset thinking about yourself. But back to this pure thing, because I was thinking the other day, uh, is, it, some, people, people, some people can't handle a compliment from you. Some people can't handle a hug from you. Why? Because their brain is not pure. So some people, uh, I, and now I'm going to share this with you all. There may be some signs I just don't feel like hugging. My brain is somewhere else. Uh, there's some people I just don't, I don't even go there, as Mother T. Because their mind is not right. You look at him too long in church, oh, he likes me. I'm serious. He wants me. You like your mind picking mine. But the, 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 the devil have your mind being played tricks on. You, and then, and here's what happens. You, you start moving yourself in a certain body language and, and trying to be flirtatious. And you don't realize what you're doing, but it's, it's, it's happening because your mind said, they want me. 
I shared with these people the other day, man, I keep on kidding. I'm, I'm trying to stay with these stories, but this is just, it was so funny. True story, there was this guy in the, in, it was in the McDonald's, and the guy was blind, right? But his eyes was not, you can't even tell, he didn't have his glasses on, and he was sitting there just eating his hamburger. <laughs> uh, did I send that to you? Uh, he was just eating, he was eating his hamburger, he was having a good old time, and then he was just standing there eating his, he was sitting eating his hamburger, and there was a, a, a guy or like over there, and he was just staring straight at him. And the guy started like, smiling. So he, I don't know, he was, then, then he changed, and then there was a lady sitting over there. This old lady was just, and she was a Hispanic lady, and, and he was just staring at her, eating a burger, and the way he was eating a burger it was just sensual, and she was just all getting carried away, fixing her hair, changing her pose, and getting all adjusted because she thought this guy was staring at her. And this went on for like a good 30 minutes while he was eating his food. Both would come in, and they were thinking he's staring, and here's what happened. He finished eating his burger, he pulled out his cane, and he starts walking. <laughs> and everybody, everybody, everybody starts <laughs> feeling bad. They start laughing because, oh man, we thought this dude was looking at us. But the, what caught my eye was this Hispanic lady. She sat there, and actually started crying because she actually was convinced in her mind somebody is finally paying attention to me. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters: the devil will play you when he thinks you're desperate. You don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry. Oh, right Amen. You need somebody to love, go get yourself a hobby. Go join a women's group or a man's group or somewhere where you can be somewhere. You know, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If you're single and you're hungry, you're going to make a mistake. Anybody went to the grocery store when you're hungry? Yeah. You buy things you don't need. Right. Same thing when you're physically and emotionally hungry. You are going to grab on the first thing that fills you up. And let me tell you something. It ain't never junk food. Yeah. Amen. I love ice cream, but I sure like me some, I like some good food that stick to the ribs. Because don't nobody in their right mind eat ice cream when they're hungry? Amen. There's a consequence. <laughs> Amen. Is it 7 o'clock? Yes. It's 7 o'clock. I need to get the young man home. Uh, somebody can take them home for me. Uh, uh, to cure all things are pure. And I want you to support brothers and sisters because some of y'all need to change your mind. Somebody say, change your mind. Because your mind thinks wrong. Your mind does not think right. Alright? So the pure, all things are pure to them that are defiled and unbelieving. What's the side says? Nothing is pure. So the reason why they can't, they can't handle you is because in their mind you did something crooked. Right? Amen. Probably be looking at, at my car and they'll be like, well, how do you get a car like that? Oh yeah, you spend the church money. You must be spending all that church money over there. <laughs> like what church money? <laughs> <laughs> must be nice, bread. <laughs> I'm serious, I hear, hear the kind of stuff. Oh yeah, everybody, look at the bread. Rev works. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 16 hours a day, 7 days a week. While you sleeping, Rev working. Amen. So don't be a hater, be a participator. But here's the thing now. People that don't have a pure mind, the first thing in their brain is, oh, not the rev is working. Uh, rev, what you doing over there? Uh, hey, this one sister, seriously, this sister came to join our church because she called she, she, well, she came and started coming to our church because of the kind of car I was driving. Seriously, she said, oh, I just had to go to church. When I saw your car, I had to come to your church. I said, for real? But you have silly people that are superficial like that. Huh? And so nothing is pure. That means every, even if you're trying to be pure, everything that you're saying is, is impure. And so you have to know where you are. Know your environment. The Bible says, but even their mind, their minds and their consciences is defiled. All right, and some of y'all did or dealing with these people too long, and guess what? At night you're sleeping. I'm sorry, at night they're sleeping and you're awake because you've been around all that corruption. You've been dealing with all that corruption. You are allergic to it, but you stayed there. Huh? 
Anybody ever been in an uncomfortable place and you just mm -hmm. stayed there? Yeah, right, yeah. Huh? Next verse. But sometimes my wife will fall asleep on my arm. And she sleeps so good. I don't like her. But I don't like but I said respect sleep. Amen. If my wife is sleeping, I'm gonna do everything in my strength, mother to, to make sure she don't wake up. That's right. That's right. Everything. I'm serious. I come home three or four o'clock in the morning, I'm tipping. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes, Sister Darlene, for some reason, when I get to the bathroom, I reach for something because I don't want to turn the light on. <laughs> and I knock something over. Oh. Well, here's the thing, though. Sometimes she'll go to sleep, she's laying on my arm. And she's sleeping so good, but my arm is killing me. I mean, my arm is like Jabez. Pain! <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Fingers all getting all numb. Now she's a baby. You all right? Yeah, I'm gonna fly. <laughs> <laughs> but so in my mind, like, please just roll over. Just, <laughs> Amen. But every now and then, every now and then, it, it'll get to a point she ain't moving. I said, you know what? I got to get my arm back. I, I've stayed there as long as I can. I can take it. That's right. That's right. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing wrong with that. I know we're trying to win the world. I know we're trying to win the loss. I know we're trying to get people saved and get people come to church and be hospitable. But you need to realize there's sometimes you got to say, you know what? I can't do this anymore. All right? And people shouldn't take it personal. You shouldn't take it personal. Learn, learn I mean, listen to me, brothers and sisters. Uh, 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 at the end of the day, there's some people that's not going to be in your life forever. Everybody was not meant to spend their lives with you. Some people are just seasonal. You outgrow people. I've seen this so many times where a woman let's go to the, um, let's stay right there. A woman would go and get into a relationship with an older guy because she really didn't have a father figure. She grows up, get herself together, all right? And now he's losing control, so what he has to do, he's now he's got to be abusive and overbearing or whatever to bring her back out of subjection. And she's grown now. She don't need a dad. She needs a husband, a man. He can't fulfill that role. So when she stays there, she, she stays in an abusive situation because he can't change. Vice versa. I see these men marry these older ladies. That's what. That's Move on, move on, move on. The Bible said they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. In other words, with their mouth they talk, but they're holy. But their man mannerisms, the way they act, the interact, the way they talk, the way they deal with people, and holy about you. That's why I told you all when folk come to you and say, I thought you was a Christian. Don't start calling scriptures and speaking in tongues. Evaluate yourself. Something triggered something in your mind that says something's wrong with you. You're not right. Amen. <laughs> I was at the. Uh, <coughs> I keep on these stories. But they profess they know God, but in their works they deny Him. When you know God, you know the truth. I went to this jury store to get a piece of jury fixed, and the lady's like, God. Uh, she didn't call my, my jury. She, didn't, she said it was uh, something that broke. And she looked at it. She said, um, she said, is that fantasy jury? I'm like, what's she said? I said, what's fantasy, fantasy jury? She said, um, she, so she took it back to the jury. She said, oh, I'm sorry, sir, but we don't, we don't fix fantasy jury. I was, I was like, what's fantasy jury? She says, it's fake. Amen. She didn't put it on a micro, 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 what do you call it? Microscope or glass? No, she says, it's fake. Can't fix it. And I got a revelation out of that one, brothers and sisters, because some of y'all got some fantasy husbands and fantasy wives. Got a fantasy baby daddy, fantasy baby mama. And you expect them to come to church so the Holy Ghost can fix them. Baby, your situation is fake. 
come real with God, it don't work. We have a saying in the streets, come strong or stay at home. Right. The Bible said, prophesy they know God, but in their works they deny him. They're, they're, they're fantasy folk, they're fake, being abominable and disobedient until every good work reprobate. And I, I kept on struggling with this all last week because I'm watching all these preachers keep on preaching about disobedience, disobedience, all these disobedient people. I'm like, this, this, something's wrong. Because if you are a child of God, somebody should have to keep on telling you about being obedient. Why is this going on in the body of Christ when you got preacher after preacher after preacher keep on bringing up the subject of people being disobedient? They're disobedient because they don't know God. Because if you know God, you don't have any problem keeping His commandments. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Is that what he says? Yes. So your mannerism shows that you don't know God. You know His word, but you don't know Him. The demons know the word of God. Matter of fact, the devil was quoting scripture when he was in the wilderness talking to Jesus. Am I right about it? Yes. Man, oh man. Why does the time go by so fast? The point of how we got to all of this is, is on this rest. Uh, on, on your page six, I don't know if you have it on the handout, but what stuck out to me on your page six was we have no power against demons in our own strength. That means you by yourself without God, you cannot defeat Satan. All right. Now, the way the devil works is the devil like to get you frustrated. Some of you frustrated. Does anybody know what it means to be frustrated? What does it mean to be frustrated? What was that? Confused. Getting upset about something you can't control. Getting upset about something you can't control. Frustrated. Or that keeps occurring that we can't change. It just keeps happening. It's like, I, whatever you do, you can't fix it. Frustrated. What does frustration look like? Um, miserable. <laughs> what do you look like when you get frustrated? Upset. <laughs> huh? Y'all you know, you know, ever been, uh, well, I don't know if y'all play spades or, or bit with or whatever, and, and, and they... I've seen people get so angry they just flip the whole table. <laughs> They're frustrated. Oh well, he lost. And, and this is just, this is an amazing thing. Now, the worst fights I've seen is with their partner, not with the people they were playing. <laughs> you cut my truck. What you do? <laughs> you bitch, like they just going off. And they're going off because here's what happened. It, it, over time, it just got frustrated. They're frustrated and it just built up. It's like, and this happened in marriages. Believe it or not, there, there's a person in the Bible that says it's a little, a little fuss that's full of mind. And people have, and when you see people have these big old giant blowouts in their, their, in their marriages, what happened is that built up over time. Okay. It wasn't about he forgot to take the trash out. That was just the straw, straw that broke the camel's back. Huh? You just like I can't, I can't take no more. But it built up. Why it built up? It built up because guess what? One of you all were not listening to God. You were listening to your flesh. One or both. Hmm? Pastor said, no, no, what are you talking about? What here's the happen? You got angry. And you ate it. And you went to sleep. And you thought about it all night long. And see, while you're sleeping, the devil is putting all it. He, the devil is really good about bringing, about bringing up stuff that folk did to you. Amen. But he never reminds you of what you did to them. And he'll be giving you dates and times. And you just can't wait till they wake up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you can hit them with the revelation, and you know you did this, and you do it there, and, oh. and it comes because you're frustrated. You allowed yourself to have flesh take full authority over everything that's coming out of your mouth. Some folks can be so frustrated, they can't even get their words out. You're abominable, disobedient in every good work. You're frustrated and you can't rest. And here's what happens when you can't rest. When you can't rest, you ought to get fatigued or tired. And once you get tired, now your open season is open season for the devil. Amen. Folks get depressed, suicidal, take drugs, do all kinds of stuff when they get tired. I'm just tired of her. I'm just tired of him. 
I can't, I can't do no more. And then you find them at the club, and that's why you see them at the, at the club on Friday night drinking their Long Island iced teas. Because they're tired of their man or they're tired of their woman. And they're going to leave Friday night with somebody else and wake up in somebody else's hotel room on Saturday, then go back home embarrassed and ashamed. Because they allowed their flesh to get frustrated. See, when you get frustrated, you're going to make mistakes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. What does it say? Genesis two, chapter 2, verse 2. I'll get at least one, one on your hand now before my time is up. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. When you get to say amen. Has anybody in here ever been frustrated? Mm -hmm. Well, here's what you need to do, brothers and sisters. You have to think about what got you there. I was talking to one of my friends. I said, you know, I have a, I have a very, very bad temper. I said, you do? I said, yeah. I said, but guess what? You'll never get to see it. Because the Holy Ghost has given me what's called discernment. Somebody said discernment. So I don't, I don't get caught up in foolishness. All right. See, in my culture, um, it was, it was basically life or death. We didn't, we didn't do a whole bunch of arguing and bickering, and it's like you just took them out. They either killed you or you killed them. That's the way it was. All right. All this going toe to toe and head up, arguing, fussing that us, you guys do it in, in this world. I just look I'm like, whoa. And, and you got men that argues like a woman. That was not in our culture. But you get all, all frustrated and you're all into the flesh. You're all, all caught up in your emotions. Because the devil has full authority. And when the devil has full authority, you're going to mess up. Huh? You can't hear God, you can't hear your wife, you can't hear your husband, you can't hear nothing but yourself and the devil. Matter of fact, you're the smartest person in the room. I'm going to submit to you. That is, that's not going to work too easily. Huh? She has to sit work, she's the boss. Amen. 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 So Sonola was the postmaster, but she couldn't be postmaster ever if it be a month. Amen. I, I'm serious. I used to go to her office. She'd be, she be cracking a whip. Grown man, 60, 70 years old. She'd be bam, bam, bam. Hey, Omari, one time she came home, she thought she was at the post office. Oh. <laughs> she did. I said, um, baby, this ain't the post office. <laughs> Amen. No, I, I, don't, I, no. I may go postal. <laughs> But this is not the post office. <laughs> Amen. Here's what you have to do, brothers and sisters. Every now and then, and, and you see the way you guys are laughing, we laughed about it because the devil can take a situation and turn it into something terrible That's right. when you say things wrong. Right. Learn how to be nice when you say something. Put a smile on huh. your face. Amen. That could have turned ugly real fast. Oh. Fast. I mean, watch this now. Death and life are in the power of. You're creating your reality with your mouth. And I want y'all to do this week. I want, what I want you to do is I want y'all to do a serious assessment of where you are right now. We get ready to go into a new year. Everybody, every year, people make these New Year's resolutions. Come as a neighbor. If you don't do something with your mind, your new year will be no different than your old year. Amen. I was looking at a New Year's resolution from 2015 on my Facebook. Facebook's a trip. It just remind your stuff. 2015. I can read that to you all today and it apply to most of you all right now. Because you have made zero progress in three years. Well, I, I'm going to say zero. You have not made um, the progress you should be making. Come as a neighbor, I am not where I should be. Where I should be. I, I raise both hands and both feet because I'm, no, I'm not close. Come on, sir. We have a lot of work to do. Now listen to brothers and sisters. Time is running out. Time, but, but just think about this. This year's already over. Can you do, does anybody remember what happened in August? What happened in July? I 
I mean, don't the 4th of July seem like such a long time ago? <laughs> Here we are at the end of another year. And we get ready to start the next year. Guess what? Before you know it, we're going to be in the middle of next year. Do you not know they already got all the supplies in the back of the stores for Valentine's Day? They are. They started putting the Christmas stuff at my Home Depot up in July. It wasn't even August. There was all the shelves was all blacked out. What they get ready to do? Are we get ready to move out all the summer stuff and put in all the Christmas? What? And the world's moving into warp speed. People are already talking about the elections in, in 2018 and then the re-election in 2020. I know, what's a, we're still in 2017. And the reason why the devil has you doing all this stuff is because it keeps you distracted, it keeps you frustrated. And then you start speaking things and talking about stuff you got no business talking about. I got but one scripture to deal with y'all, uh, and then we've got to have to close. Uh, uh, I mean, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, third chapter, verse number seven. Ecclesiastes, what? Three and seven. Does anybody have it? Ecclesiastes, chapter number three, verse number seven. Yes, a time to rent. It's a what? A time to rent. Okay, now, now he's talking about there's a time and a place for everything, a time to rent. Does anybody know what rent means? Ren? Uh, remember? No, no, that's not it. Anybody know what the word ren means? No. What's it say? I hear heard somebody says to tear. There, there's a time when you tear yourself away from a situation. There's a time to ren and a time to sow. That means there's a time to pull yourself apart from something, and there's a time for you to come together with something. There's some people you need to realize, and I, I say this happening all the time, that people say, well, in 2018, I'm going to unfriend all these negative folk. That means they're going to rend them from them. I don't, I don't unfriend anybody. No. Never will. Because I see Facebook as a ministry and not my, my place of my, and all your, <laughs> all your personal business. Well, they got all my, you put your business on Facebook. It's all this mess on this mess on there because you put it there. It's garbage on there. It's garbage on there because that's what's attracted to you. Garbage attracts the garbage. Facebook know what you're watching. <laughs> you start watching all these folks fighting and slapping on their kids. Guess what's going to be popping up on your Facebook every single day? Folks slapping on kids and beating up each other. Because you've trained your computer to your mind. Notice this now. Your Google. Anybody do Google searches? Yes. Your Google searches search stuff according to your mind. Your pop-ups that pop up there, you don't have the same pop-ups as I do. They may have, you get my phone, you know, hitting on pop-ups off the Lakers or the Dodgers. It's Bible verses, pops up, and guns. Don't tell nobody. He says, rent time to sow and a time to what? Keep silence. A time to do what? Keep silence. Time to keep silence. Ladies, ladies, and ladies, ladies, ladies. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. There's a time to be quiet. Now, ladies. Somebody say ladies. Come on, I'm going to talk to the ladies just for a second. I only got like three minutes left. If your husband likes football, basketball, baseball, or some particular sport, and he's right in the middle of the good part. That's not the time Amen. to have a conversation. Amen. I don't care how pressing it is. You have a clock just like he has a clock. You know at 825, he's going to be watching the show. Don't wait till, don't wait till 845 right when it's, I mean, it's all cranked up. And all that, I just want to know, baby, uh -huh. you're wrong. Now, you're going to get more frustrated because he's frustrated. It's quiet up in here. There's a time to keep silent. Come on, choose when you're going to fight. Mother T, you all right over there? You can recognize on this one? And don't, it's, it's very tempting because you're frustrated. And the reason why it's so tempting to do it is because you want to mess up their day like your day is messed up. <laughs> How, how, how he gonna be sitting there enjoying the game and I'm frustrated. Girl, go eat some chocolate or something. Oh. <laughs> Get some ice cream. Call one of your girlfriends at vet. 
Don't vent too loud though, because you know how some of y'all do it. You make sure you vent so they can hear you. That's not the way you do it. Amen. Amen. I'm trying, come on, say, Pastor, just trying to help you out. Man. 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 That's a time to be silent. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I'm going to share this with you all. Brothers, 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 if your wife has a good girlfriend, don't, don't eavesdrop on their conversations. Because their conversation is just venting, and you're going to take it personal. She called me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just girls talking. That's just the way they talk. Right. Learn how to keep walking because you're going to get frustrated. And again, you can't wait for her to get up the phone. <laughs> Who you talking to? I heard you on that phone talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. And guess what? I'm, I'm going to share this with you all. Brothers, brothers, brothers. Somebody say brothers. brothers. A woman has all of her quarters working at one time. So she's on her phone talking to her girlfriend. Guess what? Four plus four is eight. You can only operate with one quadrant at a time. So you're out in number seven to one. Because her girlfriend don't like you. She's trying to hook her up with her brother. Oh, sorry. No. Now she knows. Now she knows. That was a joke. Calm down. <laughs> I knew he was looking at her funny. It's all in your mind. Don't nobody want your good time but you. Amen. That, that woman that, that, that God gave you is the woman that God gave you for not for nothing. Amen. Sometimes I go places and people say, ooh, ooh, pastor, he's so fine. I'm fine for Sister Nola, I'm not fine for you. You may be looking at the outside and thinking you're on it because there's, there's more inside of Victor than what you see on the outside. See, 